hello folks in this tutorial we are going to look at how to set up wordpress on a subdomain we shall be using godaddy in our example but the process for most web hosts is very similar but if you are on godaddy first go to godaddy sign in click on sign in in the top right hand corner click on sign in again enter your username your password and then click on sign in again so it takes you to the godaddy dashboard where you see all your products click on web hosting this tutorial is assuming you already have web hosting with godaddy click on web hosting and you should be able to see the various hosting plans that you are registered for here we have four servers select the one you want to install on and click on manage wait for it if you are on a slow bandwidth connection this panel is kind of slow take a little time to load but just be patient it opens so it's taking us to cpanel now this cpanel is a common panel that most hosts use but what godaddy has done is to customize the look of theirs so if you check another host that also has cpanel you may also see similar buttons like this a panel like this but different style elements it may look quite different from this but don't let that worry you the these icons here they are usually there and if you scroll down a bit you will see where we have web applications now not all cpanel may have web applications but some cpanel have some software called installers eg fantastical that you can use to install various scripts on your host so here we have WordPress but before we go on to install WordPress remember we are installing on a subdomain which we have not yet created so we need to create that subdomain first look for the portion that says domains and then subdomains so click on that subdomains okay then it says create a subdomain now a subdomain is just like if you read what is here blog.example.com so the blog here is like the sub domain of this example.com so if you have something like my name.com and you want to create a subdomain that subdomain is going to be something of the form subdomain.myname.com so that's what a subdomain is so here we are going to be creating a subdomain for our woocommerce store where we'll be selling resale rights ebooks so we'll call that resale we want it to be resale dot our main domain these are all our domains hosted here so I'm going to look for the one I want to use richnigerian.com so what this is doing is the subdomain that I'm creating is going to be resale.richnigerian.com and then if you look below here it's asking you for the name of a folder where it's going to install anything that has to do with that subdomain so every file everything is going to be referenced under that folder so let us use resale for that and then create okay so it says success resale.richnigerian.com has been created so we have created the subdomain and we have specified that the files should be located in the subfolder resale of our root folder of the hosting account that's our public underscore html so once you are done with that you click on go back it takes you back okay back to if you want to create another subdomain you do it here if not we don't want to do that we'll go back to home so now that we have a subdomain ready let's see what happens if we type that subdomain resale dot reach nigeria.com enter server not found 
because we've not put anything there. Okay, now we are back home to our cPanel dashboard. We now come to web applications. If you are using one that has Fantastico, scroll down and click on Fantastico Deluxe or Fantastico. But if you are on GoDaddy and if your dashboard looks like this, you can simply come down here and click on WordPress. If you want to install Joomla, Drupal, you click on any of those other ones. So it brings you here. Installatron. This is a sample of what the website would look like. And if you want to go ahead and install it, go ahead and click on install this application. Or if you already have an install that you want to import into this one, you can click on import existing install. But we are creating a new one, so we we'll click on install this application. Now it brings us here to select the domain. Notice that it shows all our domains and the subdomains associated with them. So under Rich Nigerian, you can see our subdomain here, resale.richnigerian.com. If you want it to still be on a further subfolder of the URL, you can add a directory here. But we want a situation where when people type resale.richnigerian.com, what opens up is our WordPress website. Okay, so go ahead. Version 4.6.1 recommended. This may change, but 4.6.1 at the time of creating this tutorial is actually the most recent version of WordPress. That's why it's recommending it. So when you are here, whatever it shows here, whatever version, just pick the one that has recommended with it. And then you have to come here and accept the WordPress license. If you do not want it to automatically update, take this one. But that is not recommended. You should either pick this or pick this third one. So to be on the very safe side, we are going to go with this third one so that whenever there's a new version of WordPress, it updates itself automatically. It doesn't wait for it to come and update. Then for the WordPress plugins, I do not recommend you update them automatically because there are times where some new versions of a plugin may have conflicts that an older version did not have. So if you don't want to experience a situation where your website is automatically updated and the plugin has an issue, then you can select do not automatically update WordPress plugins. But what this means is that you have to go into your website regularly and update your plugins yourself. Updating of your plugins is a very good strategy, so it's something you should always try to do. Then WordPress theme automatic updates. If you want the theme to update automatically, you can also select that. If you don't, you can select this. If you've made modifications to your theme and did not use a child theme, then take this one so that it doesn't auto automatically update your theme. Because if your modification is directly on the main theme file, when there's an update, it will wipe off all the modification you've done. Unless you use a child theme, that's when you should select this option so that even if your theme updates, doesn't override changes you made. If you are totally new to this, I'll suggest pick this option. And then if your hosting plan has automatic backup features, you will see this option. So you can select it. It's good that you select it. Okay. So your administrator username, these are the information that you are going to use when you are logging in to configure your website. It's not advisable to use admin as your administrator username. Use anything but admin because admin is easy to guess and easy to hack. Whatever you use there, make sure you write it down. The password has to be a strong password. It's recommended. So if you are finding it difficult to generate a strong password, I really don't know how to. The system has already automatically generated one for you. If I click show password, you can see the way the password looks. Looks like a bunch of gibberish. If you don't want to be stuck with this password, then you can change it to something of your own. But remember, a good way to develop a strong password is use a mixture of uppercase letters, lowercase letters, and numbers. So I've used here, the first character is a big letter. I'm not going to show this password here. But the first character is a capital letter then there's a small letter following it and then two numbers then your email here you put your administrator's email for administrator email you enter your email address put 
this is the email address I've been associated with your new WordPress blog. This title is the name of your blog. If you're already familiar with WordPress, then you know what the title does. But if you are totally new to WordPress, then the title is what shows up at the top of the page when someone visits your website. So we'll just put anything here, then when we create the website and we'll look at it, we'll be able to tell where the title is. So here, I'm just going to call it Resale Write eBooks. And here is another description. So that should describe your website, what it's all about generally in a few words. The tagline doesn't have to be so long. The website title should be even shorter. Two-factor authentication. Do not enable two-factor authentication. Limit login attempts is also a security measure that would block logins from people who are trying to log into your website but enter fake passwords several times so it gives a specific number of times that you can enter a wrong password and it blocks the login screen for a short period of time before allowing you to try again it can be good for security so we'll leave it there enable multi-site multi-site wordpress is a feature of wordpress that allows you to manage many wordpress websites under one installation that's not what we are really doing now that is a different topic on its own so we'll say no do not enable i'll leave it like that advanced setting management automatically manage the settings for me okay let's see what is there under advanced settings database management automatically create a new database for the installed application okay that's good send an email notification that's okay default backup location my housing account automatic backup okay so this one we want to change to seven daily so it backs up every day for seven days so if you have an issue you are able to restore your website from the past seven days look at all the options they all look good then click on install and wait for it to install so while it's installing it shows processing this could take a few seconds or minutes if you wait for a while and the screen doesn't seem to change maybe just talk there on that screen you can simply refresh your page before you refresh your page you can also check your email to see if you got any message which I did this message was sent to me this is an automated email from Selectron WordPress version 4.6.1 has been installed to resale.nigerian.com http colon slash slash resale.nigerian.com slash wp-admin so it gives you all your information here in the email if you've gotten this email it means it has installed so if the code that is still stuck you can refresh it and it will give you a list of all your websites under that server installed through installation but among those at the bottom you are going to see the new website so here it is resale rights ebooks resale.richnigerian.com hello world that's the blank wordpress website if you want to visit it you click on any of these links so that is how to install wordpress on a subdomain